Welcome everyone. I'm Rosalind Dowling from the University of Manitoba's Alumni Relations Department. Thank you for joining us today <clears throat> as we learn all about creating online portfolios. Before we begin, I would like to acknowledge UM's campuses are located on the original lands of the Anishinaabe, Cree, Oji Cree, Dakota, and Diné peoples, and on the homeland of the Métis Nation. We respect the treaties that were made on these territories, we acknowledge the harms and mistakes of the past, and we dedicate ourselves to move forward in partnership with Indigenous communities in a spirit of reconciliation and collaboration. I'd also like to thank our affinity partner, TD Insurance, for their generous sponsorship of the UM Career Lab. Some of you may have noticed that your audio and video have been deactivated for this webinar. However, we encourage you to ask questions throughout the presentation by using the chat function. We're, we've also allocated time for a Q&A towards the end of the presentation, so don't be shy, ask away. This webinar will be recorded, posted on our website within 24 hours or so, and shared with everybody who's registered via email. So feel free to pass it along to anybody who might be interested in the topic. When you exit the webinar um, in about an hour, you'll be directed to a very short survey. The UM Career Lab is a new program that we've created in response to alumni feedback, so we'd really appreciate you letting us know what you think of it so far. It's the only way we can improve the experience for you. Without any further delay, it is my pleasure to introduce you to our presenter, Matt Purdy, a U of M Bachelor of Arts grad from 2013. Matt is a career development practitioner and certified career and work life strategist based here in Winnipeg. Through his work with nonprofits, post secondaries, and private clients, Matt has helped over 1,500 job seekers take control of their careers. Take it away, Matt. Thank you, Rosalind, for that wonderful introduction. And good evening, everybody. Welcome to today's session. Um, yes, my name is Matt Purdy, and I'll be leading you um, through today's session. Over the next hour, we are going to dive into the wonderful world of online portfolios. So this is a great topic. I'm glad there was so much interest in it. Um, it's sort of a follow-up to one of my previous sessions for the Career Lab around outside-the-box job search strategies. If you happen to attend that session, fantastic. If not, that's okay. This is a great standalone session as well. But during that session, we talked about ways that job seekers could think outside the eight and a half by 11 inch box that is that resume. And if you've been thinking about, you know, showcasing your work in a different way or having something unique and personal and professional to send to an employer, then an online portfolio is absolutely a fantastic option for you. Let's dive in. I do wanna just start with a little bit of an introduction. And as I was driving home from work today, I actually thought about uh, a different way of introducing myself. Normally I talk about sort of my career background and my career history. And so, you know, yes, I'm a career coach, facilitator and speaker, uh, but it, it hasn't always been that way. I, I was a University of Manitoba student um, some years ago, and I was frustrated at how you know, easily school came to me, but job search just wasn't happening as easy. And I thought there had to be a better way. Like there's gotta be more to it than this. And so through a whole series of events, I won't bore you with the details. Um, I ended up becoming a career coach, facilitator and speaker. And over the last 15 years, I've um, you know, gained experiences in, in language and educational and vocational guidance, everything from teaching English abroad to career coaching newcomers to Canada to now working in Manitoba post-secondary institutions, um, basically just help people, helping people find work and trying to make the process as painless as possible for you. Overall, I see my role and my goal as this. I help people understand and apply best practices in job search so that you can perform, sorry, search smarter, perform better, and take control of your career. So as I was saying, I, I was on my drive home tonight and I thought about sort of a, a different little story that I wanted to start with here today when we were talking about portfolios. And it, uh, it was something that happened to me last week, actually. So I have, I have two daughters, uh, an eight and a five-year-old. And um, the eight-year-old, you know, we were scheduled for parent-teacher interviews. And, uh, you know, over the course of the school year, almost every day when she comes home from school, I'll ask her, like, what, what did you do at school today? And like a, like a true eight-year-old or like many students out there, they say, 
I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> we, you know, we played and yeah, we did some math, I think. And, and she never really has much to tell me. Right. And so I'll ask some follow up questions and try and dig out a few details. But if any of you have ch small children or children in school, you, I hope you can relate to this. Um, but they never have anything to say. And then last week we had parent teacher interviews. And instead of the teacher telling us what my daughter had been doing in class, my daughter had created, and I didn't know this, she had created a PowerPoint presentation with the help of the teacher and basically a summary or an overview of all of the different things that she had done in the first two months of the school year. And so I was blown away by this because every time I asked her, what have you been doing? She says nothing. Uh, but then she had these 15 slides that documented sort of the, the key learning outcome or, or learning moments from the past two months. And then she came home the next day with a, with a folder that was literally two inches thick of all the projects and assignments and activities that she had done in the first two months of school. And we sat down and went through it. And I said, oh, so this is what you've been doing in school <laughs> over the last two months. And it, that's when it dawned on me that it was this portfolio that she had brought home, both the folder and the presentation, is what I had been looking for. It's what I was curious about as a parent, and it's how she demonstrated what she had been doing over the last two months. And I thought that analogy, that comparison translates so well to adults and the world of work because employers want to see that. They want to see demonstrations, samples, proof of what you've accomplished in order to understand what you've been doing over the last you know, X number of years in your career. So uh, it was an interesting experience and, and I'm, I'm hoping that sort of uh, you know, gets us headed down the right path with today's presentation around portfolios. So release your inner child <laughs> if you must. But um, in terms of today's talk, I have uh, three items on the agenda. So the first one, we're just gonna overview, do an overview of what an online portfolio is. If you know this is a new term, or maybe you've heard of a portfolio before, but not quite sure what an online one is, uh, we're gonna clarify that. Then we'll get into the heart of the presentation, which is how to create an online portfolio. I'll walk you through the entire process give you some tips along the way, and we've got a few examples to look at. And then towards the end, we'll talk about how to use your online portfolio, both for yourself as well as sharing it with others. So lots to get through. Let's dive into our first topic. What is an online portfolio? So in short, you know, the way I describe it is that a portfolio is a collection of items artifacts, if you will, that show what you've learned, what you know, and what you can do. In today's job search, in today's job market, you can't just simply claim to have learned something. You know, stating that you have a bachelor's or master's isn't enough. We need to back that up with some sort of proof, some sort of documentation or sample that you actually learned something and were able to apply it to a real world situation. Um, you, you could also think of, a, of an online portfolio as sort of a modern day business card, you know, resume, project showcase, just all wrapped up into one. So there hasn't been a lot of innovation in the job search space, you know, for decades. But now we're starting to see these outside the box job search strategies, we're starting to see people include more than just a resume and cover letter. And really there are no limits. There are no restrictions to what you can and can't send an employer. You know, just because they say, send your resume and cover letter, they, that's not all. Like they, they didn't say you cannot send your portfolio or a link or a website or anything else. So I'm encouraging you to take the initiative to create this for yourself and then include it because it's what employers are really looking for and can help set you apart from other candidates. Um, and, and, you know, going back to my, my child's analogy, you know, they do show and tell a lot at school and it's building that, that sort of um, those communication skills and demonstration skills and we can do that as professionals too. 
your online portfolio is basically show and tell for, for you, for professionals, right? Show you what I did. Let me tell you about it. Show you this conference I presented at. Let me tell you about how I prepared or show you this project I worked on. Let me tell you how I worked through it. And so this can be, you know, it sounds like a, a simple or maybe juvenile explanation, but it's incredibly effective. So that's sort of a basic overview of online portfolios. Um, if you're not quite convinced, maybe I'll try a little bit more as to why you should create an online portfolio. So I've got a couple of reasons here. Um, number one, it's about being competitive in today's labor market. You know, statistics vary, but they say for one job ad, an employer can get anywhere from 50 to 250 applications. That's a lot of resumes and cover letters to go through. How many of those people do you think are sending an online portfolio? Probably not many. And so if you're in that small group who does, you quickly and immediately become a very competitive applicant, right? You took the whole process seriously. You obviously have something to share and that can help you be like, help you compete for jobs in today's labor market. Uh, another advantage to this is to build your online presence. You know, we, we live in a digital world where social media and web, you know, web traffic and um, all types of business and uh, professional communications are happening online. So if you're not there, you risk being left out of some important conversations. You know, there are plenty of online tools, uh, sites and, and profile builders for you to choose from. But if you're like, if you're not taking advantage of these, I hope we can sway you a little bit because, you know, being able to maintain, manage and manage a professional online footprint is a pretty important skill in today's marketplace. Uh, another reason is to provide social proof. And so, this is that evidence that that uh, those examples of your skills in action, right? I mean, imagine if I came on this web this webinar and I said, you know what, everybody, I can ride a bike, like I know how to ride a bike really well. Yeah, it's not really that impressive, is it? But if I said, you know what, last weekend I rode my bike around the city of Winnipeg in two hours. And here are photos documenting my journey. And here's a map of my route. You know, like that is the proof, the social proof that would convince and hopefully impress you. <laughs> uh, we can take that approach with all of our professional experiences as well. Um, your portfolio will help illustrate how you have progressed both your qualifications and your experience levels as well. So it can show growth in terms of the size or scope of projects that you take on. Uh, number five, it'll help you keep an ongoing record of your skills and achievements. You know, a lot of times people come to me to help, with, help them write resumes and I'll ask them, you know, tell me what you've done and they have no recollection or they just can't remember anything. Uh, I understand, you know, because so many things happen over a long period of time, it can be hard to re recall that information. But if you get in the habit of documenting those important projects, adding them to a portfolio, it helps you maintain that record and makes resume writing, interviews, everything else in job search that much easier. Uh, next one is, or the last one is to stand out as an applicant. As I said, you know, 50 to 250 applications and not many of them are including something extra. So if you do, you quickly stand out as an applicant, but not just any applicant, an applicant who took the job search process seriously, an applicant who has demonstrated their value to their previous employers um, and likely could do it for, you know, the next, next potential employer. Um, you can showcase your technical skills and your soft skills, right? So all of those things that are crucial to an employer's decision making, you can demonstrate through an online portfolio. Okay, so there are uh, six reasons why I think people should create an online portfolio. Hopefully there's one there that convinces you.
The last thing I want to talk about in this introductory section is just how an online portfolio can help you. So we've talked about proof, social proof, and it's really about demonstrating your skills and abilities. Again, a lot of times when candidates are writing resumes or going to interviews, they focus on the future. They'll say like, I can do this. I know how to do that. I'm willing to do that. But unless you actually demonstrate from the past your skills and abilities in action, it's not as convincing. Those past accomplishments hold much more weight with employers than future promises. Uh, we've talked about this showcasing samples of your work. I mean, we know the old expression, a picture is worth a thousand words, uh, then a video must be worth a million words. <laughs> you can communicate so much through pictures, videos, um, stories, documentation, um, and it's not one piece or one artifact that is going to make or break your application. It's really the sum of those pieces all together. Um, highlighting relevant accomplishments. We, we've sort of danced around this one already, as well as supplementing your applications. So, you know, making an accomplishment or, or stating an accomplishment on your resume in, in one sentence or two sentences is one thing, but it's really hard to summarize some of our greatest accomplishments in one or two lines. Um, and a lot of times employers want to hear or want to learn the backstory to that. Um, you know, if you planned an event at the university, for example, that could take weeks or even months to put together. And you could document that timeline for an employer to showcase exactly what, you know, considerations were made at every step along the way. Uh, and then we're going to talk more about this throughout, but supplementing your applications. There's no rules about what you can and can't send an employer as long as it makes you look like a strong candidate. So, you know, whatever form you choose for your online portfolio, it is a great tool to supplement your applications. You know, resume, cover letter, and a link, or resume, cover letter, and, a, you know, a PDF or a PowerPoint, something in addition to those basic documents that everybody else is submitting. Okay. So that's my intro about what is an online portfolio. I hope I've sort of cleared it up for you. Um, now let's dig into the good stuff, which is how to actually do this. So first and foremost, I need to state that this is a process. It is not a weekend project, okay? Um, an online portfolio is something that you can invest a lot of hours in, but I don't want that to intimidate anybody. It is something that you can start at any point in your career and then just get in the habit of maintaining and adding to, even removing pieces from as you grow in your career. So yes, the process will take time, but that process is actually as important as the final product. And the reason for that is when you're doing all of this research and reflection and information gathering, you are equipping yourself with the language, with the tools, with the examples you need to interview better, to write better resumes, to network better. So the process is as important as the final product. And because your experiences are unique, your profile will be unique as well. So I, I try to caution people against going out and looking at templates and, um, and, and copying someone else's portfolio. Um, it's okay to get inspiration from samples, but really this is a personal, uh, personal document, just like your resume and cover letter would be. So overall, I've got a six step process that I'd like to share with you um, to creating an online portfolio. Uh, I'll reveal the six steps, but then they're gonna be displayed on screen the entire time. So don't feel like you have to write these down right away. Uh, step number one, we're gonna talk about just researching different platforms. Uh, then we're gonna look at gathering inspiration. After that, we'll identify our experiences and gather evidence for those experiences. After that, we will create themes and finally we will assemble and put it all together. So six steps, we're gonna talk about each one in detail. 
let's start with the first one, which is just researching different platforms. So as I alluded to earlier, there are a lot of different sites available to you. My first piece of advice would be to consider your goals. What are you trying to get out of this portfolio? What's your profession? Uh, do we have a budget for this? And what your intended use of your portfolio is. Um, your answers to these questions will, will, help make you, uh, will help you decide which platform will be, would be right for you. Um, there are various online platforms that you can choose from. Uh, some of them that you might be familiar with, others might be new. Um, but, you know, obviously LinkedIn is, is one of the more common ones. People don't think about it as an online portfolio, but absolutely it is a, a business card, resume, and project showcase all wrapped up into one. Um, if you're looking for some just standalone, you know, website builders, Wix and Weebly and WordPress, sort of depending on your skill level with, uh, with uh, website development, um, with your budgets and what your intended use are. So, you know, you could choose WordPress is a little bit more of an advanced option. Wix and Weebly uh, and Squarespace, I guess, are, are um, a little bit more user friendly. There would be some costs associated with those. Um, I think Wix does have a free website builder, but it does have some branding like Wix branding on it. Uh, Card is a new one that uh, I've come across recently, and it's a really user friendly, really affordable option as well. Um, if you were looking to build a simple uh, website with just a couple of pages, which is really all you need for a portfolio. Um, if you've got uh, some advanced maybe Adobe skills, then you could look at Adobe Portfolio. Um, or if you wanted to get into videos, certainly YouTube, Vimo um, would be options as well. Um, Behance and GitHub, those are a little bit more industry specific. So if you're looking for work in a creative field or an IT field, um, you know, you want to have the right online portfolio for your industry. So. Um, so there's a good list. This is by no means meant to be a, a complete or an exhaustive list, but I just wanted to give you some ideas and, and allow you to start researching which platform might be best for you. Okay, so once we've decided on that, our next step is to gather some inspiration. And what I usually suggest people here is just go browse. <laughs> go look around your favorite websites not just sample portfolios, but any of your favorite websites. So, you know, if, if, if you, if you, um, if there's a certain company page that you like or a personal page that you like, or maybe there's a school page that you like, but really the idea here is just to get ideas on how information is displayed, uh, whether it's, you know, different fonts and spacing and text and image alignments and all those kind of things. We want to get some inspiration from, you know, what's possible. From there, you can then go to, if you're using one of those portfolio builders, um, they, they may have portfolio templates or sample portfolios available for you to browse and, and sort of drag and drop information in or upload your images wherever you want to. Um, there may be inspiration there. Um, they, they do make it pretty easy for people. Um, another place to get inspiration would just be to look up, you know, other people that you admire or that are doing well with their portfolios. Um, people might have their own personal websites, uh, blogs, or, or profiles from industry professionals. So yes, get on, get on all of those sites we just looked at um, and see what people are doing. You, you don't have to reinvent the wheel here or come up with something completely, completely original. Um, you can absolutely be inspired by what other people are doing. Um, then the fun stuff, you know, you can note down uh, color schemes and fonts and layouts and headings, um, even if it helps to sort of draw it out on paper, how might you organize um, information, if you're not quite ready to dive into the, uh, the tech side of things, get a blank piece of paper and just start drawing it out, how would you like this to look um, before going to, to create it in the online space. 
And if you're open to it, you know, some people I've, 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 uh, I've heard of people and, and seen people create mood boards for themselves to sort of, you know, capture and, and collect all of their inspiration. If there's a certain feel you're looking for, um, you know, again, color schemes, things like that, you can try and capture that all in, in a mood board. Um, and so hopefully, you know, this, this process is, is fun. It's meant to be creative and you can come up with an idea of what you want your portfolio to look like. All right, from there, now that we're fully inspired, <laughs> um, the next step would be to start identifying your experiences. So I'm, I'm going to take a bit of a risk, but I know it's not really a risk here. Uh, and I'm going to go out and say that you have, without a doubt, developed many skills throughout your life, your, your work experiences, your academic courses, maybe even internships, co-ops, and volunteering. Um, and so you probably have a lot of different experiences to choose from. Um, Having worked with thousands of job seekers over the years, I know they don't always see it that way, but trust me, these experiences are there. We just need to dig a little deeper and uncover them. Um, some of your experiences, some of your skills are, are probably closely related to the job you want or the occupation you're looking for. Um, you know, operating a specific software, using a specific piece of equipment, speaking a certain language, a method, whatever that is, you, you're highly trained in, you know, those skills. You can think about it as those are your, um, like, hard or technical skills. At the same time, other skills you have um, might be used or can be used in different occupations, like uh, transferable skills. So for example, communications, problem solving, conflict resolution, those are all highly transferable. And to be honest, routinely rank at the top of employers list of skill requirements. Um, those hard and technical skills can be taught, they can be trained. But these power skills, um, we used to call them soft skills, now we call them power skills because they're so important, are incredibly valuable in the workplace. So it's, it's just this, this process of, of reflection, I think, and, and identifying you know, the knowledge and skills and abilities you have by, by asking yourself some questions. I mean, what do I know? What, what did I go to school for? What am I trained in? Um, what learning outcomes did my courses have? Um, what workshops have I attended? Um, what other knowledge have I gained outside of the classroom? Uh, what can I do? What can I do for others? What can I do for employers? What kind of value can I provide? Um, you know, what kind of work do I enjoy? Um, what kind of work do I get asked to perform on a regular basis? Um, what kind of work do I get praise and um, commendations for? Um, and how have I demonstrated that, right? So it's one thing to say, I know how to do X, but then we need to follow that up and say, how have I demonstrated I know X? Or I know I can do Y, but how have I demonstrated I can do Y? Um, you know, I, I see a lot of resumes and, and it's often those power skills that people sort of go over too quickly, right? Like uh, effective oral and written communication skills. Yes, everybody has effective oral and written communication skills on their resume. And my question is, well, how have you demonstrated that? Like, give me an example of a document you, you wrote, um, a report, uh, an analysis, a summary, a press release, something that proves you have effective written communication skills. Same goes for uh, oral or, or uh, spoken communication. Give me an example, uh, an event you spoke at, a podcast you are part of, an interview, a panel, something that demonstrates those communication skills. And so now that we've started to identify these experiences, this is the important piece, gathering evidence. 
So the whole point of your portfolio is to provide this evidence to potential employers, right? Um, at the beginning stages, I usually just tell people collect everything, like don't be selective, you know, pick and choose, um, don't have any strict criteria, like just collect as much as you can. And this process might take you several weeks or, or months, especially for that initial portfolio that you're putting together unless you were in the habit of, of doing this. And if you're not in the habit, it is something I would recommend that you start. Um, I know personally, like I have, I, I have boxes in my uh, email, like folders in my email called portfolio, because every time I get a thank you email from a student or a good job from my manager or anything else that I think is going to go in, like would be useful, I save it into that portfolio folder in my email. And then it makes portfolio creation much, much easier. Uh, I know people that have kept a, just keep a Word document or an Excel file on your desktop. And every time, you know, you get something, put it in there, date, project, comments, whatever. Um, but yeah, get in the habit of gathering this evidence. Um, really, we go pretty broad here. So, you know, we're not just looking for work experience or evidence from jobs. You can and should collect evidence from all your experiences, whether those are educational, training and professional development. Yes, of course, employment projects. Uh, I think students often overlook their academic projects. You guys spend a lot of time at home, in the library, you know, put it working on those assignments. Any time that you had to demonstrate your knowledge to an instructor could probably be used to demonstrate your knowledge to an employer. Right. Um, we might have to tweak it a little bit or or uh, maybe reduce it if it's uh, too long. But those assignments demonstrate so many skills employers are looking for. Uh, certainly, if you're involved in the community, even hobbies and, and activities and personal accomplishments are fine. Um, I think, you know, these are making a comeback. For, for a while, we didn't include hobbies and activities on resumes, but they are making a comeback. And the goal is to be interesting. And so, you know, I, I would stay away from like the reading, cooking, and traveling hobbies because everybody has those. But if you've got a unique hobby or activity and can provide proof, um, I would encourage it. I, I had a, a client not long ago who mentioned, you know, they were interested in um, like metalworking and they, they made knives and swords and cutting devices. <laughs> um, and they had pictures of all of these different tools that they had made. And like, it just spoke volumes. Once, uh, once we've sort of gathered all this information, then we just need to like review it and edit it and make sure that it's you know, free of any errors, of course. Um, we need to make sure the information is reliable and authentic and current as well. We, you know, it's, it's a little bit odd to, to sort of fly a flag that we collected 15 years ago. Um, you know, employers aren't going to be super, super interested in that. But certainly if they're within the last five to 10 years, then, you know, that's a pretty good shelf life. The more current, the better. And then lastly here, just make sure the information does not contain any confidential or private information. Obviously, if we're going to be sharing this portfolio all over town with different employers, we don't want to um, get ourselves into any trouble with, you know, sharing financial information, customer information, budgetary information, anything like that, we would want to stay away from. And so absolutely, if you're unsure, just get permission from your employer. Okay, moving along. Nothing in the chat. So I'm hoping everybody's uh, okay and and maybe they're saving their questions until the end um, 
Okay, so now we're on step number five, um, creating themes. So once we've gone really broad, we've collected all of this evidence, then we need to start you know, being selective and identifying what are we actually gonna include here. So the, uh, I would start by maybe thinking about some themes that you want to have in your portfolio. And I've got a, a couple of examples for you. So most portfolios include like an about section, right? It, the portfolio is about you, um, but you could include many different things here. Um, you could include a little biography about yourself if you sort of write the text format. Um, I've seen people include some self-assessment results if they've done like the Myers-Briggs personality test, um, other uh, um, assessment or personality tests. You could include hobbies and interests here, even travel experiences, you know, your language skills. This is about you. So who are you as a person slash professional? Um, and, and yeah, I mean, again, not an exhaustive list, but these are some ideas that you could go with. Once we've got the about section, then another common one would be school, right? You're all pursuing different programs and there are many, but I also wanna broaden that understanding. There are many things you could include in the school section of, or the education section of your portfolio. So of course we can include the, the degrees, diplomas and certificates, um, transcripts, if you had a really good one, um, reports or feedback from uh, instructors, uh, assignments, presentations, case studies, anything like that, uh, photographs, uh, maybe you've been involved in some publications or research projects. Uh, maybe you have a professional membership or license somewhere. Uh, certainly if you did any work experience as part of your program uh, and awards, scholarships, anything like that, those all reflect really well on, on you as a candidate. And so again, the idea here is to, to, to really showcase like what happened in the classroom? <laughs> what knowledge did you pick up and how are you applying that? Okay, so then another common section would be employment. Um, and there's a lot we can do here. So if you have job descriptions, either you know, something that's been given to you or something that you wrote yourself would, would be fine. Uh, of course, your resume cover letter and references. You might have a work accomplishment section highlighting specific projects you've worked on or challenges you've overcome. Uh, some performance evaluations. I would maybe like take out a quote or a testimonial of something. Maybe you uh, got some awards. Um, one, one of my, sorry, I'm laughing. One of my um, favorite rewards, uh, awards that I ever received from work was the GQ award. And it was awarded to the best dressed male at our offices. And I thought, yes, <laughs> um, that, is, that was a highly coveted award, very competitive at our, at our office. Um, but it says something about the recipients, right? It's like we, we show up to work you know, professional. Um, so I have that in my portfolio, a little fun too. Um, thank you letters, cards, you know, anytime you get a, a message of appreciation from a colleague, a customer, um, a manager, absolutely. Um, maybe you've been promoted or maybe achieved really good customer satisfaction results. Um, anything, anything is, is possible here. These are again, just a few examples. Another category you might consider might be teamwork and leadership. We talked about the importance of power skills, these soft skills. So maybe you're involved in sports or clubs or associations. Um, maybe you plan events or host events, coordinate events. If you've ever done any public speaking, uh, maybe you've been certified for teamwork or leadership. Um, maybe you've even held positions of leadership, but you know, these are, these are important skills in the workplace. So we're looking for ways to demonstrate them in our portfolios. And I think I've got one more here. Yeah, community. 
So if you're involved in the community, that says a lot about the type of person and professional you are. Um, tell us, what sort of volunteer work are you involved in? How many hours of volunteering have you put in? Do you have reference letters from those volunteer organizations? Maybe you've been featured in a newspaper or in, um, in a video of some kind, or maybe you collect testimonials from the places you've, you've volunteered at. Um, I, I, I really just wanted to, you know, I give you an, like an idea dump here um, and share with you that really you're only limited by your own imagination and creativity here. Anything that makes you look good in the eyes of an employer tells them who you are as a professional, what value you bring, and who you are as a person, I think can go a long way. So the final step in this online portfolio is really to put it all together and assemble it. Um, so yes, collecting the information, the evidence will take a little bit of time, but then it's about being selective. We don't always send everything to each employer. You know, reflect on what you're most proud of and what is the most quality piece or pieces. Uh, it's not about having the most uh, items in your portfolio. It's about having quality pieces. Um, we try to avoid sort of like randomly just placing them. You know, it, it should be like a cohesive story that, uh, that aligns with every, that, uh, every piece aligns with each other um, and helps guide the audience member or the viewer through your portfolio. So we don't want that catalog experience. We want more of a like guided tour experience. Um, I would try to use variety as much as possible. So a balance of text and image and video and links um, just to have uh, the, 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 the range of options for an employer. Uh, too much text is obviously overwhelming. Um, too many pictures without some sort of description might not be clear. So yeah, we need a, a balance there. Um, some tips here, um, you know, just seek feedback. So once you've put your portfolio together, share it with people you trust, uh, people whose opinion um, is important to you and get feedback from them. You know, you don't have to do this on your own. You can absolutely collaborate and um, um, coordinate with others um, or uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Consult with, uh, with people you trust. Uh, you want their honest opinion. You want their honest feedback. Uh, if they're employers in the space, even better. And then finally, we're ready to publish and promote it. So now's the time to start sharing. So I've got a few examples um, that I can show you. And you know, they're from different, um, different online platforms that we looked at earlier. So we'll go through them one by one. Um, the first one is just is LinkedIn. And I'm, I'm a big proponent of LinkedIn. So I, I use myself as the example here. But you know, when I send in a resume somewhere, um, I always include a link to my LinkedIn profile because it tells them so much more about me, right? Um, so obviously there's an image, there's banners, they can see who I'm connected with. Um, they know sort of my, my work history. They can see um, there's a, a featured video from a past career lab I did um, with the U of M. So I've got some featured work there. They can watch a video. They can download some resources, view your activity, see who you've been talking to, and even go through your work experience. Um, you know, if you you can attach different artifacts to your work experiences on LinkedIn. So there's some awards I've won um, or been a part of. The, the work history is there. It, it just is so much more than a, than a resume ever would be. Right, it's interactive. It, there's a variety of media there, so you you want people to come and spend a decent amount of time there, right? Uh, you know, on resumes, you're going to get five or ten seconds. Hopefully, they'll stay on your LinkedIn page for a little bit longer than that. Um, so that's one option. Um, 
here's a, another one, a, a, a contact of mine um, did a PowerPoint presentation. And so he's got here, you know, my name is Felipe. And he's got some fun facts about himself. You know, he went to law school. Um, he's an aspiring dog trainer, lived in Hungary, right? Like those things you would never put on a resume, but on your portfolio, you can open up and be a little bit more vulnerable. Um, he's got a slide about where he's worked. So it shows his career progression. And this doesn't require any, you know, high level technical skills to, to complete or to pull off. So PowerPoint is, is certainly an option. Um, earlier, I mentioned um, a website builder called Card, C-A-R-R-D. Um, and, and here are two uh, sample portfolios from, from there. So you can see they're, they're clean, really professional, again, interactive. You can click through. Um, one of them's got a, a portfolio followed by some uh, courses. Uh, this other one's got his work and his resume and his contact information. So, I mean, just imagine if you were an employer and you, you received a resume and cover letter, but you also received a link to something like this, right? Like it just oozes professionalism and really helps, helps you stand out, helps you cut through the noise. Um, and then I've got two other examples that I'd like to show you, and I'm, I'm hoping this works. I'm just going to jump over to another screen here. So, uh, sorry. Can I just get a quick confirmation that you can see this interactive resume now? Yep. Perfect. Thank you. So here's an interactive resume by this guy named Robbie. Um, he's an IT whiz. So, you know, if you've got the tech skills, maybe you do something like this, but, you know, scroll down on the mouse or use the arrow keys. And so I can control that. I should be able to control that. Scrolling down. So level one, about section and all of his skills pop up, right? So he's coded this on his own. All his skills pop up, jumps over. Oh, here's his about section. He lives in New York City. He's an NBA fan, just got dunked on. <laughs> and level two, he's got some more, some more skills here, graphic and web software, scripting and programming languages. So, right, so he's not only claiming to have these skills, his resume demonstrates these skills and then his experience section. So there's one job, another job, a third job, and some awards and publications. And he's really gonna take off here. Right, design awards, Buzzfeed, Fast Company, Mashable. So, I mean, this is a pretty robust um, portfolio, but absolutely, you know, it would stand out in the eyes of an employer. So, if you're looking for, you know, a web development or graphic design or um, software development job, you don't have to do this. But what I'm saying is use your skills to, to really demonstrate what you've got for an employer. Uh, so that's one. And then the, the second one I want to show you is just a, a video introduction and the, the power of video in an online portfolio. So I hopefully that one. Hi there, my name is Brandon Montiel and I'm super excited to introduce myself. Now, I know it's really out of left field to record a video to introduce yourself, but as I've seen from your job posting, you're looking for a creative social media intern to create content, not just for TikTok, but other social platforms. So for me, it makes a lot of sense for me to show you what I can do. So in this video, I wanna share with you the top five reasons for why you should hire me as your social media intern. Number one, I'm very comfortable with TikTok, YouTube, Instagram, and other social platforms. Not only am I an avid user of social media, but 
but I'm constantly listening to trends and techniques for how to roll out social media content strategy. In particular for TikTok, I've been noticing a couple things. Providing value and education on the platform is huge. So I think a really big opportunity is taking some of your blog posts from some of your sexual health educators and turning those into TikTok videos. Adapting trending sounds and memes to your content is a wonderful way to not only stay relevant on the app, but also to really make people trust you. Because a lot of times when you see a brand out here advertising, it doesn't really resonate well, but when you're engaged with like the culture of TikTok, it really demystifies the content you're making. And so people start seeing your brand, not as like a corporate entity, but more as someone you can trust. Speaking of trust, users love community. So building some transparency through behind the scenes, going live and answering questions is a wonderful way for you to build trust in your brand. Number two, I'm comfortable using photo and video editing software. Whether it's using Canva for creating eye-catching graphics on Instagram or using Final Cut Pro to edit either YouTube videos or TikToks, I'm comfortable using both. In fact, I just completed an online learning course where I learned about idea generation, content strategy, and repurposing your content across different social channels so that way you can save your time. All right, number three, I'm self-motivated. Isn't it annoying when you have to constantly tell an intern what they have to do every second of the day? Yeah, that's not me. When I get into a job, I really like asking plenty of questions and understanding the why behind what I'm doing. I found that by doing this, I'm able to start making decisions on my own, so that way I can let my managers go ahead and focus on what they need to focus on and not have to worry about what I'm doing. Number four, I'm very comfortable talking and creating content about sexual health for all genders. Now, I couldn't help but notice that at the very, very bottom of your job posting that you made a little clause that said, and I quote, must be comfortable creating content focused on sexual health and wellness for all genders. Now you'll be very happy to learn that one of my very first jobs was actually teaching teenagers ages 12 to 20 about sexual and reproductive health services. No, seriously, I would literally sit down with them and talk to them about the birds and the bees. Since then, I've learned even more in college while pursuing my degree in sociology. And honestly, I just like talking about sexual health. I think it's really cool and I don't think it should be taboo anymore. And finally, number five, I'm very passionate and I'm not afraid to take initiative. I'm very interested in learning more about social media management and as you can see from watching this video, I have a really strong drive and attention to detail that I plan on bringing to this position. Not only that, but I also realize I have plenty to learn, so I'm really looking forward to collaborating with your marketing team. With all that said, I want to thank you so much for watching this video. Attached to this email and video, I have my resume where you can find some of my contact information. I really look forward to hearing from you. Have a wonderful day! Okay. So I hope that um, got the wheels turning a little bit. And you know, a video like that doesn't require a lot of technical knowledge or- My job is oh, to make sorry. college- Sorry, the video started replaying. Uh, so yeah, that video doesn't require a lot of technical expertise. Really, if you have a, a, a smartphone with a camera on it, you, you can record a video like that. Maybe a little bit to do the editing. Okay, so that brings me to topic number three. We're getting close to the end here, so I'll go through this pretty quickly because um, I do want to have some time for questions. But how do you use and share your online portfolio? First, I just want to talk about, you know, for yourself, it can be used in a variety of ways. Everything from goal setting to career and education planning, helping you job search, network, and interview, uh, prepare for interviews. As I said at the beginning, the process of creating a portfolio is as valuable as the actual portfolio itself. You'll get clarity around your career goals, you know, what you need to do and how you're going to plan to get there, um, what types of jobs you're going to search for, help you connect with people in the field and ultimately be really, really well prepared um, with examples, stories, proof when you go interview. Um, and then the last thing I just want to quickly touch on is how to share it. And really, this is pretty straightforward. I, again, there's no limits on how you share it. But if you create a video or you create an online uh, website, it's just about sharing links. So put them everywhere. Put them on your resumes, in your email signatures, on other social media platforms, um, even when you email your applications. Um, during an interview, there's, there's no reason you couldn't bring a tablet and say, hey, do you want to see my portfolio in the middle of an interview or share your screen during a virtual interview um, or during a thank you letter. Hey, I really enjoyed our interview. Thank you for your time. Here's a link to my portfolio, which you know demonstrates uh, many of the things I talked about. So once you've got it created, then you can feel good sharing it with employers. So, okay.
I did want to leave some time at the end for questions. I know I've just thrown a lot of information at you, but we've got a few minutes here. Um, happy to take some questions. Uh, okay, so I see a question in the Q&A. Um, <clears throat> are there any rules on how long your portfolio should be, like with resumes? Also, how formal and direct should it be? Um, good question. So no, there are no rules around how long it should be. I mean, not strict rules, like two page, you know, one page cover letter, one to two page resumes. Those rules are a little bit firm, firmer. Um, I wouldn't advise going too big with it. I mean, I, I don't think a, a, a 15 or 20 page uh, slide presentation would be a good idea. That's just too much. So I would try and keep it in like the four to seven range um, for, for, a, for a presentation or a slideshow. Um, certainly if you go with a web option, like um, one of the uh, website builders, you have a little bit more flexibility because people can just click and navigate to where they want to go. So if you've got six, eight, 10 different pages, um, that would be okay. Or if you just did a simple like one, like landing page where people had to scroll through those sections, that would be okay as well. Um, in terms of how formal and direct it should be, I would say play to your industry. If you're in a more formal, you know, ultra professional industry, you should mirror that language back to them. If you're in a more creative, informal industry, then you know you can mirror that language back to them as well. So play the industry. Um, what if you don't have? Uh, what if you don't have a reference for a portfolio slash resume? Uh, I'm not quite sure I understand that one. I mean, uh, a reference like a like a sample, or are you talking about a reference like um, somebody who can? endorse you someone who can endorse you yeah I, I don't think you you i mean a you don't absolutely need them um but i would just say broaden your definition of reference so yes supervisors managers you know co-workers are good references but customers clients um uh coaches instructors even friends, you know, you could probably get away with a, like a testimonial from one of them. So broaden your definition of reference. It certainly doesn't have to be work related. They're good, but it doesn't have to be. Um, and I'll just throw it out there in case there's any international students here, like references from back home are just as good as references, um, local references as well. <laughs> Uh, the example you showed us, your LinkedIn, do you edit it depending on the job you apply for? No, I don't. Um, I'm at a stage in my career where I'm pretty much on a career path, you know, career development related. So I don't really meander too, too much anymore. But um, the tricky thing we have with LinkedIn is you really only get one profile, right? So I would say align your LinkedIn profile with the job you want. Um, if that changes, you can rebrand and redesign your LinkedIn profile. People do it all the time. Um, how about us who are starting our profession? Yeah, so it, I mean, it depends. Like if you're looking for a job in line with your education, it would make sense to brand and, and position yourself that way on LinkedIn. Um, if you're just talking about like a part-time job while you're in school, I, I probably wouldn't target my LinkedIn to that. I would be looking more for my after, uh, after graduation career goals. Okay, well, I'm, I'm glad there were a few questions. I, I wish I had left a little bit more time. Sorry, I uh, got talking a little bit. Um, I'm okay to stay on for a few minutes if, if everybody else is or um, Rosalind, I don't know if you, uh, have any time constraints that we have to abide by, but. We are not pressed for time, but um, if there's a few other questions that roll in, we can certainly take them. Sure, okay. But you have inspired me to want to start documenting my projects, I'll tell you that. <laughs> Absolutely, yeah, yeah, get in the habit. Makes it a lot easier. Um, well, if there aren't any more questions, maybe we, we can wrap things wrap up, up here. 
But thank okay. you very much, Matt. Um, that was fantastic. And like I said, it's got my it's got my wheels spinning for sure. And nice. I hope it has for all of you as well. Um, Matt mentioned in his introduction that, that this webinar was a follow up to one that he had delivered previously. And so we've been recording these webinars. So I can I am happy to put the link in the chat if you guys ever want to revisit those. I'm going to do that right now. I think I can do that right here to everybody. So if you want to check out any of the webinars, you can do that there. And what else did I want to share? I wanted to share that, um, oh, the holidays are just around the corner. So I would like to personally invite you all to pull out your best ugly sweater and join us at the second annual holiday edition of Trivia Night. It's a ton of fun. It's happening on December 14th and you can register by putting that in the link as well, if you would like to join, to join us. And um, don't forget that you're gonna get surveyed just as you're exiting the webinar today. And thank you very much. We'll be sure to let you know when we plan the next series of uh, Career Lab webinars. And Matt, thank you for doing this for us. It was fantastic to have you with us this month. And I hope we can work together again in the future. Absolutely, yeah, thanks for having me. Have a good night, everybody. Good night, everybody.